Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel and today I have something new here for you. Uh, I've posted already on my Facebook group and also on my website a great plugin for bass if you're into recording into your own home studio and uh, if you do your own recordings like I do for my demos and my original songs I usually play the bass as well. I'm a guitar player, I'm not a bass player but I, I can do the, the basic. Okay, so I have a session here uh, as you guys can see on the screen. I want to play a little bit of the session and then I'll show you the plugin and everything you need to know about it. Let's take a listen. Okay, there are, there are the parts three. There's a lot of automation already going on here. I'm gonna start from scratch. Those these uh, three um, channels you guys can see here that says bass, bass low end, bass distortion, are my basses. They go into a sub here that has some processing. I'm gonna start with this one. Okay, I'm gonna solo this bass. I'm gonna put this part in loop so you guys can hear it better. Now this is the plugin I'm talking about. Okay, this is Nembrini Audio. And this is the um, Black Ice Beta Gamma amplifier for bass. And this bass is on a dark glass amplifier, if you guys know what I'm talking about. And it's a great plugin. Uh, first and foremost, it's on sale. So go grab it now because it's uh, very affordable right now. And uh, it's on my website. Uh, it's linked, I'll link it below the video as well. And there's a couple of things you need to know about this plugin. But I'll start from scratch. Uh, first and foremost, this is the. Um, this is the layout uh, of the plugin. Then you have here in cabinet impulse response impulse loaders. You have your cabinets. You have four cabinets to choose from, four different mics to choose from, and a bunch of other controls are going into that uh, while I'm playing. That also impulse response loader. You can load your own impulse responses, and if you bypass, you can use your third-party plugin, whatever plugin you want, impulse response loader and bypass the one built in uh, the plugin. Okay, let's take a listen to the DI bass without the plugin and then I'm gonna engage it. A very clean and good DI sound, by the way. I'm gonna engage the plugin, take a listen. It sounds super fat. I already dialed here some, some, some knobs to my taste, but I'm gonna explain what I do. So in this case, I'm gonna use the distortion uh, feature here, not even the punch or the edge. Distortion feature here, you have two knobs, which are the mod and the blend. In here, you can choose your flavor of your distortion, the beta or the gamma, okay? Two different distortions. And if you don't know what they mean, you can also go here and click manual and you can read all this and explain everything very nicely so it's very easy to understand okay and then you have a blend if you use distortion to use distortion totally distortion signal or just a clean signal okay right now i want uh i'm not engaging the distortion so this is not doing anything right now i'm going to leave it as it is then you have a six band graphic eq master volume power and level and drive also from the distortion and a compressor built in. Then you have punch to add more punch to your signal, um, high mids, and you have hedge for that top end without harshness or anything like that. So uh, for this bass, I usually I usually um, play the bass once, and then uh, what I do is split it uh, into three different tracks. One of them is the bass, um, just the bass with the amp clean. And then I'll use another track to use the bass with distortion and another track to use just the low end of the bass. And then I'll, I'll adjust the faders accordingly and usually it sounds great. So all basses together sound like this, so you just can hear. All the levers are already set, but I'm going to begin again. Okay, so the first one is this one. Uh, as I said before, it's already EQ, so I'm not, not going to touch that. 
Uh, in terms of cabinet, I'm using the cabinet, the first one that appears, the SVT. I'm using this mic. You have control over the position of the microphone and the distance, all right? You also have here a DI out, which means you can uh, put the tone, I'm going to show you, brighter or darker, okay? I'm going to dial this knob while it's playing. You also have low cut and high pass and high cut filters, so take a listen. So you adjust this section just to the eye out. I'm gonna adjust to my taste. Then on the right, you have your faders to adjust the signal of the microphones. And you also have a great built-in reverb, which is really cool. As you don't use reverb on the bass, especially in this kind of tone, but I might use it. So I'm gonna show you how it sounds. There's three settings here. Studio. Then Garage. Which is bigger. And then Stage. Kind of cool, but I'm not going to use it here. Okay, maybe in another project, other type of songs, maybe we'll do. Then you have here also Bass, bass and Answer, which is basically, you will turn it, turn it on by clicking here in Power. And then you have, you will select your frequency and adjust to taste, increase the bass in certain frequencies. Let's let's check out around 50. In this case, there's too much bass already going on, so it's clipping here. So I'm gonna disengage this because I don't need it. Uh, and basically, this is my clean signal. I can choose between four different microphones. I'm gonna leave this as it is. Uh, and back to the amp. So my first signal here is this one. The compressor is activated and it's doing a really great job. I'm not using an uh, external compressor for now. Another, I mean, another plugin I'm not using. Just the compressor from the plugin. Then I have here the bass distortion. Let's just listen to that one. I'm going to increase the level right now. And then dial it back. So on this setting here, um, what I have here is the hatch distortion. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do some some tweaks here while you guys listen to the tones, okay? Different flavors. The blend knob, I want full distortion. Drive knob. For me, it's good here, the level. And now let me adjust this to my taste. Now I can click and punch. Probably more of a low mid bump here, and the edge, high mids or really highs. And since I wanted to cut through the mix, I boosted here some highs and took and uh, rolled down some low hand around 250, okay? Because I don't need too much low hand on this part of the bass. Regarding the cabinets, I'm using the same cabinet, the same microphone, just the position is different, okay? Let's take a look and listen to the position here. More low end, less low end, so I'm guessing it's just in front of the, of the cone edge uh, and the distance is really, it's really close and the position is also on axis probably, okay. Uh, there's a noise gate, as I mentioned before, it's, it's on here, although the bass doesn't have too much noise. But uh, let's go back to the amp. So this is my distortion sound. 
All right, on another instance, I just duplicated the track and call it bass low end. I put this like this and recall the plugin. In this case, totally different. Take a look, take a listen to the to the tone. I did use the distortion model here function, uh, and I'm gonna tweak the knob so you guys can hear what I'm doing. For this one, I prefer the gamma blend. I want it more clean, but a little bit of a distortion, okay? Because if you disengage it, it will alter the tone. A little bit more of a punch. Uh, then I'll leave this as it is, compressor drive and level. The EQ is also different. I roll down a lot of highs because I just want the low end. And then here, what I did is choose a different cabinet because it has more of low end resonance. Let's take a listen. So this one uh, suits my taste better. And the position distance also is important. Too much bass, clipping, distance. A distance, if you increase it, will give you a little bit of top end. And I don't want that. And I also engage the power in the answer here around uh, 55 hertz. So um, that's pretty much it. Then. When I put them together, all of them together, let's put it at unity and dial accordingly. The only thing that I have here on my mix bus for the bass is a compressor, but it's not really affecting um, the tone of the bass because it's in sidechain mode so it's just listening to the kick whenever the kick comes in this is a pro tip um, the bass goes down a little bit so you guys can hear it like this I'm gonna put the kick and show you the compressor behavior just to give more room and space to breathe uh, both the kick and the bass. So every time the kick goes in, the bass drops a little bit in volume. All right, uh, so with all the rest, let me mute the bass right now so you can listen to the guitars as well. These guitars were recorded with a microphone SM57, it's my Apollo, and were recorded with the Boss Katana. There's a lot of EQ going on here. This type of stuff is the type of stuff that I don't do on my on my demos because I don't want to, to affect the signal in any way, okay? And there's also processing here on the mix bus for the guitar sub. But with the bass, take a listen. Up. Because on the guitars, you also you don't need this kind of low end. So I'm I'm cutting here around 80. I can go a little bit higher than that, like 95, and let the bass and let space for the bass and the kick drum to live. So everything together. I was having too much noise reduction here on my bus compressor. Let me show another section of the song, but I think it sounds really great. And, um, and it's a great plugin for everything, from metal to blues to any genre. Or this one here. Without the bass. It's slipping in here, here in some channels, but then, then again, I'll go there and, and take down a little bit the level so it stays everything as it should be. So, uh, this is the, um, my demo 
of this great plugin. Um, I will do more demos with this with this plugin in other situations, other our genres, other genres of music, to show you how it fits so well in the mix. And I have another, I have a, a lot of plugins from other companies, including plugins that um, there are copies of um, of of Ampex and stuff like that. But I always had some trouble dialing my, dialing my tones, to be honest with you, because on the low mids was some sort of rumble that I have to recur to. Maybe it's my bass to uh, a lot of EQ, EQ and 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 take a head, take those frequencies out because they sound really harsh. On this one, I just plug my plug my bass and it sounds straight ahead very good in the in the default setting. So uh, on another track that I have uh, a new song that I'm launching really soon, uh, I really just uh, replaced the old VST that I had there and put this one from Membrini Audio and was magic. I didn't touch anything. I just left it there and then adjust accordingly with the rest of the track. So guys, go check this plugin because it's on sale from Membrini Audio. The Black Ice Beta Gamma bass amp plugin sounds awesome. Uh, it's affordable, very affordable right now. And um, what else can I say? It's, it's great, man. Um, it's the best bass plugin that I have here right now compared to others that I'm not going to mention any names, but that's the way it is. So thank you for watching guys and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.